Agent 47 and Diana Burnwood are the world's top assassins working for the ICA. Unknowingly, they have been hired by a shadow client to target a number of operatives of Providence, a secret organization working in the highest echelons of power. Providence's controller, the Constant, approaches Diana and makes her a deal. Eliminate the shadow client and learn about 47's past. But when 47 discovers that the shadow client is Lucas Gray, his lost childhood friend, he and Diana switch sides to fulfill an old pact. Destroy Providence. Together, they manage to capture the Constant, forcing him to reveal the identities of the three Providence partners. Eliminate them, and the war would be over. However, the Constant has an ace up his sleeve. Look closer. In the shadows. Behind the everyday world. Beyond the headlines and the seats of power. A hidden hand. A kind of company known as Providence. To it, we were just assets to use and throw away, to do the unthinkable, the unforgivable, and it never gave us a second thought. Until now, after decades in the shadows, we are fighting back. Me and 47. Much has been lost, but we are closer than ever. We trapped the Constant, Providence's chief controller, and finally learnt the names of its three partners. In their downfall, we lay the past to rest. And, just maybe, look towards the future. 37. It's time. Partners are down there. You know, I never planned this far ahead. You never do. I see someone got his memory back. Wait, is that a beacon? What the hell? Base. Alexa Carlisle's helicopter just took off. Confirm target locations, over. Diana, what's the status? Right. We have a situation. Carlisle has left the building. And I think I know why. The Constant has escaped. He persuaded one of the sailors into setting him free. And since then, he's been seizing control of Providence assets and resources. I can only assume Carlisle is rushing to contain the damage. If she slips away again... We'll keep track of her. Make sure she doesn't. Meanwhile, the plan stays the same. Your destination is the Scepter, the world's tallest building where the partners are laying low, courtesy of their host, Sheikh Omar al-Ghazali. Marcus Stuyvesant is fifth generation old money. His family made its fortune in real estate and banking and were at one point the chief landowners in New York. Carl Ingram is a powerful Washington kingmaker whose family grew rich selling gunpowder during the American Civil War and later established a globe-spanning empire in oil, coal, and steel. Both families long since retreated from public view, but their quiet dominance endures to this day. Now, the partners likely suspect that we're coming, so Mr. Gray will infiltrate building controls and disable all electronic doors and elevators. Stuyvesant and Ingram are about to find they have nowhere left to run. Right. 
This is our moment, 47. Providence ruined our lives with the flick of a pen. Today, we return the favor. Happy hunting. Welcome to Dubai, 47. Today is the inauguration of the Scepter, and the ceremony is well underway. You will find Marcus Stuyvesant near the building's signature art installation. While a paranoid Carl Ingram has ensconced himself in his penthouse suite, security on highest alert. Mr. Gray is already in position and ready to assist. Good luck, 47. 47. Come in, 47, do you copy? I'm here. Are you in position? I'm heading towards the point of entry. Good. Get back to me when you're there. 47, use your camera and scan the lock, will you? I think I can override the window's controls from here. I'm in position. 47, the inauguration is taking place close by. Once you've infiltrated it, get your bearings. I'm sure there must be floor plans somewhere. Understood. We need absolute focus on this one. If Ingram and Stuyvesant are alerted to our presence, we may lose them for good. We are so close, 47. Don't worry. They're not going anywhere. On behalf of His Royal Highness Omar al-Ghazali, I bid you welcome to the city. Nice day for it, isn't it? Look, it's just a precaution. I've been personally invited by the Royal Highness Omar al-Ghazali. I should have clearance. The name is Zayna Kazim. 
Sir, I understand. Zana Kazim, a.k.a. the Vulture. One of the top agents working for Crystal Dawn, the Pan-African terrorist organization. I almost hired him myself once, but chose the Maelstrom instead. Now what is his business here? But you can't enter without being searched. It's standard procedure. This is ridiculous. Well, that's how it is. Think about it, and come back if you want. I'll be waiting upstairs in the reception. Understood? Crystal. Listen, I want to talk to the partners directly. Make them understand why all of this is happening. And that terminal gives me an idea. There's a server room near the Sheikh's personal reception. If you can gain access to it, we might be able to recover useful intel from it. We'll have to work together to hack the system, but it's our best shot. You were being a bitch. Now go away and binge eat some Looking good, man. Looking good. Sir, if you want to get through, I'm gonna have to pad you down. Good. You're clean and good to go. Oh, Mr. Kazim. I'm glad you changed your mind. Arrogance can be a dangerous train. Yes, indeed, it can. Mr. Ingram has been expecting you. We have a conference room set up for you. Looking good today, sir. and make yourself comfortable. Mr. Ingram will be with you shortly. Thank you.
Mr. Kazim. A pleasure to meet you. Omar tells me great things about you. I'll get straight to the point. I have a, well, let's call it a dispute, which the Royal Highness tells me you're very capable of taking care of. Now, I've worked with your organization before, in Morocco, I believe, so I'm a little hesitant. Don't be. We do what's needed. Well, only time will tell. I have two assignments for you. Take care of the first one, and then we can discuss the bigger fish. Now, on to the first. An acute problem has been brought to my attention. Keep talking. I'll be candid with you. No one is supposed to know that I'm here. However, there's a journalist down at the inauguration, and he's asking rather intrusive questions about who's staying up here, and that is a very dangerous problem for me. Now, I want you to silence this little pain. You think you can do that? It's what I do best. I like your bluntness. This is his file. Hans looked. Pulitzer winning freelance. Hans journalist. He's good. And won't give up until he gets the answers he needs. And that can't happen. Consider it done. Good man. And remember, I want a picture. I want proof so I can sleep tonight. Of course. Once this little assignment is completed, come back and talk to Miss Toe. Then we can discuss the real cancer that needs to be removed. I'm sure you can see yourself out. Have a lovely day. Mr. Lund, I hear you're looking for information. Oh, really? Okay. You know what's happening upstairs? I know more than you could imagine. But we can't talk here. Follow me. Great. Lead the way. Getting a bad feeling here. Wait for me here. I'll be back as soon as possible. All right, whatever it is, better be good. Yes, that's it. Now Ingram trusts you, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Hello, sir. How are you? Mr. Kazim, welcome back. So, you have the picture? Yes, here. Good. Our guest will be delighted. Please follow me. He's waiting. If you just follow me, Mr. Kazim. Greetings, sir. So, do you like the building? This has been His Royal Highness's dream. I think for even longer than I have known him. 
Self-sufficient. Electricity, internet, even water. It's the first of its kind on this scale. It was, of course, Mr. Kazim. Please follow me. Mr. Cassie, so good to see you. Do you have the picture? Yes. Your problem is fixed. Huh. Omar said you were good. Let's get down to the important business at hand. Okay, people, clear the room. I need to discuss some delicate business with Mr. Kazim. Yeah. Perfect. We I have Ingram have right where we want him. Excuse me for a second. 47, you know home. what to do. Have a drink, see the view. It's something to behold. Now, where was I? Oh, that's right. My man here will stay for the meeting. I assume that will not be a problem. Either way, you have no choice in the matter. It's quite the view, don't you think? You almost feel like a god. But back to business. It's interesting we haven't come across each other before, Mr. Kazim. Carl Ingram finally gets what he deserves. Good riddance. Now let's get Marcus Stuyvesant. Guard assigned a code name Pinky. I got word that he entered the building, but he hasn't reported for duty yet. Probably still down at the depot, getting his uniform. I just hope he's got his papers with him. I heard rumors that he used to work for that Dawood Rangan. You know, 
The Bollywood producer who died? Doesn't sound promising. <laughs> nope, it doesn't. Stuyvesant is expecting a replacement guard. If you can locate him, we should be able to get within strangling distance of the little worm. look really bad. I'm sure it's around here somewhere. Don't you worry. A colleague is also out there looking. But this is awful. I mean, I'm in my boxers and... I think I can open that window remotely. Scan the lock with your camera and I'll have a try. For duty. Interested. About time. Our client has been going out of his mind waiting for you. Do you have the papers? Yes. Good. I'll call him now. How should I address him? It's classified. So, you don't call him anything. But officially, he's just known as codename Pinky. Sir, this is security. Just calling to let you know your new guard has finally arrived. Yes, sir. See you soon. Okay. Wait here. He'll be here shortly. So, how are you finding Dubai? Uh, it's a gold mine for people in our trade. If you threw a rock, you'd hit a rich man in need of a bodyguard. Okay, you must be my new escort. I have very high standards and trust you will do your duty. You have your credentials on you? Okay, let's see here. Well, you have been around the world. Mumbai, Italy, France, Japan. This is a very impressive CV. I think you'll do. Okay, walk with me. I need to go through some ground rules. I expect you to be by my side 24-7, unless I say otherwise. Bathroom breaks are, of course, permitted, but only when I say so. I have a very important and delicate meeting today, in which I expect you to keep your ears closed, but your eyes wide open. Understood? Now, your papers were indeed impressive, but I need to see what you can do with my own eyes. My father used to take me hunting. He was an avid hunter. I personally hated it, but always admired his skill with a knife, and grew to appreciate what it takes to gut an animal. Have you ever tried to gut an animal? Yes. Good. Then you know it's not so easy as it looks. Like trying to stab a rubber ball. 
bounces back if you don't stab it correctly. You're almost here. You have to understand. I didn't get where I am by blind faith. Okay, we are almost there. You see the shooting targets? Any fool can shoot a target. With a knife? No. <coughs> That's where the talent lies. My father always used to say, if you are good with a knife, you're even better with a gun. I want to see your skills. I don't know why, but I've always trusted a man who can throw a knife. <laughs> I'm sure a psychiatrist would have a field day with that statement. So, show me what you got. Do well and you work for me. Fail, you get out of and I never want to see your face again. Let's just hope it's half as good as you are. Only time will tell. To do Thank with you for all your that power. I'll take the rest of the day off. You deserve it. Thank you, sir. It was an honor. Thank you, sir. You impressed me. You really did. But let's get to work. Some things you should know about me, and this is very much on a need to know basis. I'm here. We got them, 47. Soon there will be no more providence. You need to find an exit. Our business is done here, but it's far from over. That's your winning face. I'd hate to see you lose. We underestimated the Constant. Yeah, he's a glorified desk clerk. He's not just after the money. He wants it all. We caught him once. We can do it again. And... Well, we're not the ones who let him escape. You still don't trust her. I don't like executive decision makers. Look. You don't have to follow her, you know? Soon, this will be over. Maybe it's time to think about the future. You have to face the possibility that there's no going back. If the ICA knows what you did... She'll make it right. She always does. We have a fix on Carlisle. Come on. We've got a plane to catch. I hope you like the rain, 47. Miss Burnwood. How did you... I have everyone's number. You really ought to know by now. You planned this. All of it. Don't be silly. I just played the hand I was dealt. We'll find you. You had me. Where'd that get you? We handed you an empire. It's for the best. The partners were complacent, set in their ways. But power is more than just security. Providence can be an agent of change. Surely you understand. Or you will, soon enough. She came home. 
Carlisle's lost an empire. You fall hard enough, you tend to be reminded of what truly matters. So, the end of the line. You ready for this? Are you? Who will you be without a score to settle? <laughs> I guess the world's most wanted fugitive will have to do. Alexa Carlisle is dead. According to the funeral invitation, that is. So naturally, it caused quite a stir when the late matriarch turned up at the breakfast table, alive and kicking. Carlisle, wisely sensing that her number is up, has emerged from exile to tie up loose ends and secure the Carlisle legacy. She may be a monster, but you have to admire her due diligence. Carlisle descends from an ancient line of warrior aristocrats. Her great-grandfather made a killing in the Second Opium War and established an empire in shipping, railroads, and newspaper publishing. While largely unknown to the public, the family still asserts its quiet dominance over global transport and logistics, media, and technology. Most senior of the partners, Alexa Carlisle, is cold as ice, tough as nails, and sharp as a razor. Incidentally, it was her late father who first brought the three families together after the end of World War II at this very house, meaning that this gentleman is the birthplace of Providence. It began here, and it ends here. Talk about poetic. One more thing. According to our intel, Carlisle keeps a case file on the constant, information that may be helpful in his recapture, so don't leave the estate without it. Right. Happy hunting, 47. See you on the other side. Thornbridge Manor. The Carlisle family's home for countless generations. The revenant Alexa Carlisle and her three adult children Younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law are all gathered to conduct Carlisle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlisle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. Now, the target knows that you're coming and her guard detail is top-notch. So Mr. Gray will secure their nearby field HQ and intercept all calls going in and out of the estate. Any appeal for backup is going to fall on very deaf ears. Good luck, Jed. This is a private area, sir. Phineas Whitmer, private investigator. I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlyle. You can go right in. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carla this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. A famous private investigator summoned by Alexa Carlisle has arrived at Thornbridge Manor. If you take his place, it may be an opportunity to get close to Madame Carlisle. I know I oughtn't say anything, but I'm so relieved you're here. Everything's just so strange. Preparing for Madame's funeral, and then she turns up alive. But then the awful business with her brother Zachary. 
And, and all this security. I've never seen a place guarded like this, and, and, and I dare say I don't like it at all. She'd be mad at me, but she just thanked me that she understood the position I was so, in. I just need to check. A that's a bit excessive, I think, oh, well, considering the fact that I spotted no less woman. than two routes and to get inside the house like unseen. We know what we're doing, so don't worry about that. I guess I thought she was going to read into them and freak out. Say I must have done something to provoke her. Shit, man. Caroline really did a number on you. Mr. Whitmer, thank you for coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution handled with absolute discretion. Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madam Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. Would you care for some refreshments? Or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? I prefer to get started. As you wish. If you'll follow me, sir. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that the staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madame's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem affected by the rather unusual situation. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside, and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you, so please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body, 47? Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant. And poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47.
Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Hmm, a photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive so until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here is the material that I prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive means an opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps you prefer searching the manor for clues first? Patrick Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, shit, it's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie, uh, for an evening stroll. I, I mean, how the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. So, is that it? Just keep calm. Lucy, for God's sake, Emma. But why don't we get any kind of explanation? It's bloody rude, that's what it is. Making us come here to play funeral and then show up like nothing's the least bit strange. Well, don't get your knickers all twisted. I'm telling you, she's not fit to be in charge anymore. Emma Carlyle. Can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around 8 o'clock. Anything else you want to know? Gregory Carlyle. Can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. 
I wish I had <laughs> quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> the, the short of it, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Anything else you want to pry from my intricate intellect? Rebecca Carla, can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? I do. I have a lot to see to. Professor Edward Carlyle, can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? Oh, yes, this dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He would never admit it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting and wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the Stag's Head around half past eight. Anything else I can do to help? Sometimes. And that detective asked to come here. Madame Carlyle must believe Zachary was murdered. Why else ask him to snoop around? That is the door to Mr. Fernsby's office. Zachary's diary. This is big. He was about to confess to the world that he and Alexa murdered their older brother Montgomery 46 years ago. And apparently, Mr. Fernsby helped make the murder look like an accident. And 47, the handwriting doesn't match the suicide letter in his room, proving he didn't write it himself. Painkillers. Lethal, if you use enough of them. But not the poison used to kill... Zachary. 
Of course, Madame Carlyle doesn't know that. Are you considering to frame the butler, 47? Mr. Fernsby clearly didn't commit the murder, but I think you have enough evidence to convince Madame Carlyle he did. Gentlemen. Maybe you should tell him you are ready to present your findings. You need to forget about Patrick. Unless, of course, you no want to do some more detecting, 47? Stick to your own kind. <sighs> you mean like Chris? He treated me like shit. All he wanted to do was play his stupid video games. Never any romance. I deserve romance. Rosie, tell me what you did last night. I'm in trouble, aren't I? I... I spent the evening with Patrick. We met after dinner, and I went home at one in the morning. He said he needed someone real to talk to. When he looks at you, it makes you feel like the center of the universe, like a real princess. But now he just ignores her. Well, he's under a lot of pressure. He's an idiot. That's what he is. That door leads to Emma and Gregory's room. A keychain pendant for the greenhouse. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing? Now this is interesting, 47. A letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. And Listen to this. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. The plot thickens. That is the door to Rebecca's room. I can see from the log that Re Rebecca was in a conference call from 9 p.m. to midnight last night. Thank you. 
We don't have any extra fuses. Ethel looked everywhere. Broken lab equipment. It looks like it was recently used, though. This is a table showing lethal dosages for the poison used to kill Zachary. Something is circled, 47. Female, age 65 to 79, 60 to 64 kilograms. I'd say Madame Carlyle is next in line for a poisoning. You have uncovered enough evidence to tell Madame Carlyle that Emma is the murderer. Quite the detective, 47. I'm impressed. I suggest you go tell Mr. Fernsby. Unless you think there are more secrets to uncover. I am ready to present my conclusion to Madame Carlyle. Very well. If you'll follow me, sir. This is Madame Carlyle's office. Please step inside. Your detective skills have gained you access to the lion's den, 47. Now, go claim your reward. So, Mr. Whitmer, you've reached a conclusion. Take a seat. Please, go ahead. Your niece, Emma Carlyle, murdered your brother, Zachary. My niece? Emma is not my niece. She's my daughter-in-law. And your niece. Emma is the illegitimate child of your late older brother, Montgomery, who you and Zachary killed 46 years ago. That's preposterous. You asked me to find out what happened to Zachary. Would you rather not know? No. No, go on. I found a letter from Emmer's mother, Jane, who was the fiance of your older brother at the time of his death. She witnessed how you and Zachary pushed him off the balcony. She believed you did it to steal the Carlisle Empire from her and her unborn child and she raised Emma to reclaim what she lost. Marry your heir, Gregory, get revenge, and secure the Carlisle Empire for her bloodline generations to come. Emma is the daughter of Montgomery and that local girl, Jane. She is. Well, the girl got it wrong. I didn't steal anything. I did what was necessary to protect the future of the Carlisles. Montgomery wasn't cut out to take over from father. All heart and no balls. Emma used the funeral gallery to speed up her installment as the lady of the house, seizing the opportunity to stage Zachary's suicide. She did her homework, used a poison made from one of Zachary's rare plants, 
found old floor plans from Thornbridge Manor to gain access to his room through a secret passage. That scheming bitch. More than you think. I found proof that she will try to poison you next. Well, I'll have to take care of that. Thank you, Mr. Whitmer. You have not disappointed. I promised you I would reward you generously if you solved the case. So, what do you suggest? I want the file you have on Arthur Edwards. Edwards, the constant. But how do you... Oh, I see. I expected you might show up. But to kill me, not help me. But I've been wrong on so many things lately, so why not this one? I will give you the file on Edwards. You've earned it. I don't suppose I could convince you to deal with my daughter-in-law now you're here. I would like to see her dead. No? What a shame. I'll have to see to it some other way then. The file you want is in the safe. God, I hope you get Edwards and make him hurt. I need some privacy. Thank you. Good work, 47. That's the file on Arthur Edwards secured. Time to take care of Madame Carlyle. Mission complete. Well done, 47. Seven. They're everywhere. Go, get out! It's the Constantine! Shit!
Stay down. Boss wants you alive. Yeah? How about now? Over here! Cover me! Walk away! <laughs> or what? You gonna take us all on? Don't. Tell the Constant to start running! You think you've won? 47 is out there. And 47 never misses his mark. Neither do you, Miss Burnwood. That's what makes you valuable. You're delusional. You think I would betray 47? Trust me. You owe him nothing. What is this? I told you we could help each other. And I meant it. I'll look forward to your call. Gray is gone. Go to Berlin and stay out of sight. We're all that's left now. We've been compromised. Abort and walk away now. Who? ICA. They tracked me. Don't know how. It's what they do. How many? One prime asset and a whole pack of up-and-comers. They've infiltrated the club searching for us. Christ, I think I killed one of them. Get out now before they spot you. No. They found us once. They'll find us again. <sighs> Keep your head down. I'll take care of this. Copy. Shit. Yeah. It, it's terrible reception. Must be the train. Agent Price. This is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Just keep trying, Agent Montgomery. Our client considers Agent 47 and Olivia Hall as a serious threat. You can't underestimate them. I never do, Joe. We'll find them. We're all in position. Good. Report back to me if there's anything. Don't worry.
Hello? Yeah, it's Helfrey. Yeah, I'm, I'm outside, but someone seems to have moved my bike, and, you know, that's where I kept our allergy pills. Can I get in? Hmm. Well, I'm sorry, but <laughs> you know me. I, I just start talking to people, and then I just forget. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, don't worry, I'll find them. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'll meet you inside. Yeah, bye. How you been? Hello, um, excuse me. I was wondering if you could help me find my bike. Now, now I have lost my allergy pills, if you know what I mean. I can get you in for free if you help me. Oh, oh, did you find my allergy pills? <laughs> I found them. I'll, you are a lifesaver. Thank you. Hey, look, if you want to get into the club, no, I can get you in for free. You know, you look like a man who needs to let off a little steam. I accept. Oh, you are a little stiff. You really need to come inside. But I promise you, my allergy pills can remove some of that tension. God, follow me. Hey, I should be on the list. The name is Helfried Ziegler, and this gentleman is my plus one. Go inside. Next. You have to put this sticker on your phone. No photos allowed. Even when you're on the guest list. Now move along. If you want to pass, you need to comply to a frisk, sir. Won't take a second, sir. Right, that's it. Keep moving, please. Come on, follow me. I can show you around if you want. Oh, this place is fantastic. It's hard to get here, but it's the best party anywhere. Oh, and thanks for your help, by the way. And now, if you want to warm up first, there is a chill-out area where you can relax. And, oh, don't forget the juice ball. Oh, the juice is famous here. <laughs> Makes all your allergies go away, if you know what I mean.
information around on us. shouldn't be happening. gentlemen. I am speechless. Jesus, pull yourselves together. He is only one guy. He's always one step ahead. It doesn't make sense. Unless... Unless this channel isn't secure. Don't take any chances. Freeze him out.
we're clear. You killed all of them? They got my message. Where are you? Diner. Up the main road. On my way. You're hurt. You should see the other guy. Never killed nobody before. What you did back there. You really are all Grace said you'd be. 47. He didn't suffer, did he? He made it count. but not broken. I'm glad. It's time we start afresh, you and me. Get to the point. You and your friends pulled off the impossible. You stormed the heavens, took down the untouchables, and yet, here we are. Status quo. It just goes to show, you can't fight power, Miss Burnwood. Power never dies, it only changes hands. The best you can do is claim it. I never cared about power. Power is a tool, Miss Burnwood. It's the thing that gets you to the thing. As the next constant, you can be the agent of change. Transform the system from the inside, or be transformed by it. No risk, no reward. I'll need to think about it. No, you won't. The real question is, what will you bring to the table? Closer. I'm telling you, the file is trash. The Constant doesn't so much burn his bridges as blow them up. Arthur Edwards, whoever he was, don't exist anymore. His personal data somehow deletes itself from any system that records him. Way beyond advanced. The partners spared no expense to make sure their controller would be untraceable. How untraceable? Look. I did what you asked, but Gray's gone and I'm no Diana. I'm not who you need right now. You gotta be kidding me. ICA? I used every encryption known to man. Who are these guys? The best. It's only a matter of time before they get lucky. We need to take them down. <sighs> you and which army? I know where the agency stores its files, mission reports, client data. If we leak it to the public. You want to whistleblow the ICA? It's the path of least resistance. Turns out, you are who I need right now, Olivia. I do this, and I'm out. So, what are we breaking into? Data facility in Chongqing, China. Run by a man called Hush. Of course. The ICA site in Chongqing houses the agency's data storage and analyst division. Needless to say, security is daunting. The state-of-the-art server vault is biometrically wired to the facility's two overseers. Imogen Royce, behavioral analysis pioneer, and Hush, a data security guru with a taste for fringe transhuman experimentation. Tell me about Hush. A 
former cyber terrorist for the Ministry of State Security in Kadanyang, who fled his country after one of the Po regime's periodic purges. He made a career doing cybersecurity for dark web deplorables, human traffickers, organ harvesters, scum like him, with no code or conscience. ICA sure can pick him. No offense. Can you disable security? A dual authentication protocol ensures that any handling of data must be directly authorized by Hush and Royce, the proverbial human factor device to make the system impenetrable. Luckily, I found a loophole. If both overseers should unexpectedly die within a short space of time, the system reverts to a temporary fail-safe protocol, which I can bypass. Take them off the board, and you'll have free access to the data core, and I'll handle the rest. And you're sure it'll work? Look, I know, Hush. If I'm wrong, we won't live long enough to regret it. All right. I will leave you to prepare. Uh, have you seen a girl around? Uh, short hair with the bright green bag? Sorry. Shit. She says she'd meet me here. She's probably running late. Yeah. She used to be really reliable. When, when we were at school, she was my rock. She always let me copy her notes. She would never have kept me waiting like this. Sometimes it feels like she's changed. People change. It's stupid, but... I'm kind of scared she's outgrowing me. Like, maybe she's changing, but I'm just staying the same. I'm just, I don't know, dead weight. She agreed to meet you in the middle of the night, in the rain. No one does that if they don't care. I guess that's true. Oh, I feel like kind of an asshole for asking her out now. She's probably ruining her shoes in this weather, just so we can get drinks. Maybe you can pick up the tab. <laughs> that's a good idea. It says I can make a lot of money to be in some experiment. They don't want people hey, like us for that sort of thing. No, they only want people like us. The flyer says so. That means it's too dangerous for rich people. That's got Hush written all over it. Using the desperate for personal gain. Maybe this is a way for you to get to the bastard. Don't do it. Oh, I'm going. This is my chance. I just need to find out where it is. Uh, the flyer has a symbol I need to fly on the building. I'm gonna get an umbrella when I'm rich. I I'm boots. Rain, rain, nothing but rain. You can play that again. I wouldn't mind promoting you if I knew. Hi there. 
get you out of the rain, shall we? Just be first. Feels good, huh? Bet it does, pretty boy. Thank you for your patience, sir. God, what's that smell? It's you. Oh, how can you stand it? Your clothes are so filthy, I can literally taste the stench. When did you last change your outfit? Seriously. I change my clothes all the time. Yeah, I bet you do. It's in there. Go take a seat. Yes. They'll you get you and the other guys through the sign-up. ...is part of the agreement when signed. And you waive all future rights to seek further compensation? Yes. Who would you like to benefit from the proceedings if you yourself are incapacitated? Would you excuse me? Yo, oh, man. Also, Hush liked the last one I sent up to the top floor. He'll be the one to conclude this phase. I knew Hush would be pleased with him. He signed up for the full package. Strong, too. I'll wrap up down here. Thanks, Jun Lee. I was just informed that we don't need any more test subjects tonight. I don't understand. There's no work? Oh, no. There will be more to come. Depending on the results of the conclusion to this test phase, come back tomorrow, and we'll schedule a new spot for you. Come in and take a seat. I'm sorry to inform you that we have all the test subjects we'll need for tonight. But you're welcome to fill in your information now and come back tomorrow. A guard is waiting outside the door. He'll escort you out of the building when you're done. Help yourself to an apple. Be a trouble. I do need my vitamins. Come on. This is my chance. Come on. I can't do it. I can't. This can save my family. I need to think of my family. Why? He's still in the bathroom, I'm afraid. Obviously. Why haven't you convinced him to come out? I explicitly told you to do that. Yes, I know. It would be a lot easier if it could be a lot of work. This is the conclusion of the project. How many companies are ready to experiment. Oh, good. I'll let Sister Lay know to join us for the experiment, then. You're done for now. 
We'll Come get on. started when Sister Lei is here. He's ready for you, Hush. He looks strong. Good. A good specimen to conclude this phase. So, the test subject came to his senses, I see. Good. Sister Lei, yes. We're about to perform the final test of this project phase. Take a seat. One on one with Hush 47. Make him hurt. Ready when you are. Jinli, let's start at 100% signal strength. No. I mean, no, there's no need. The subject is clean, cooperative. I was thinking 25% and then adjust if necessary. 60% is minimum. We'll get no motor control below, and I'm not wasting my time. But... 60. Log concluding experiment H109 initiated. Run calibration 60%. Signal strength 60% confirmed. H109 initiated. Load suggestion. Motor control. 44.1. Execute. The signal's too low. The signal's too weak. We'll get nothing like this. Go to 100%. It's not safe. You've been working too hard. With your condition, it can cause you real physical harm. It's safe. You're strong. You can overcome it. 100%. Do it. Log. Continuing experiment H109. Run calibration 100%. Signal strength 100%. Confirm. H109 initiated. Now I'll see you do as I command. Identify impulse string. Load suggestion motor control. 44.1. Exit. We need to go higher. Quiet. My ah! head. Nothing. He is a strong one. Come on. Do this. Abort. You're going too far. No. He's on the verge to break him. Go higher. It'll kill him. It's already way. A beyond reasonable intensity. This subject is abnormally resistant. He's no match for Hush. Nothing worth shit ever came to be without pain. I am calling it quits, Hush. You need rest. Okay, okay. A short break. And I'll return with a clear head. God damn that assistant. If they up the signal, it will kill him. Stay put or stay close. I want you in that chair when Hush and Sister Lei return. I'll stick around.
Sorry, sir. I cannot let you through here. Please move on. I have better things to do. You mean than handling all your responsibilities over here? While you do God knows what. Yes, I do. Where is this My It's been too much sensory stimuli. What's that in the background? What are you doing over there? Now, I don't believe for one second that you're not spending every waking moment on your pet project. You just focus on your little drones and your algorithms. I'm really sorry, sir. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to let you pass. Orders, you know. Asshole. You'll never come through here as long as I'm alive. Now get the fuck out of my face. As I said, I'm really sorry. Where's Jun Li? Never mind her. I'll take over. Let's pick it up where we left off, Sister Lei. At the same signal strength. Yes, 100%. I feel strong. I can take him. Sit. And keep still. Log. Continuing experiment, H109. Run calibration, 100%. Signal strength, 100% confirmed. H109 initiated. Now I'll see you dance. Identify impulse string. Load suggestion, motor control, 44.1. Execute. It's too low. He's got spirit. I... <laughs> Damn it! Not again. You'll get nowhere like this. I... don't understand. No one's ever resisted like this before. Let's increase the signal and get some results. What do you say, Hush? Do 120%. 120. Good. Let's do it. Continuing experiment, H109. Run calibration, 120%. H109 continued. 120% signal strength confirmed. Yes. This is it. It's all incredibly sharp. I feel my mind expanding. Identify impulse stream. Load suggestion. Motor control, 44.1. Execute! I... I feel... Huh? I'm not scared of you. I could... You got the bastard, Hush. Hush! Now go get Imogen no. Royce and we can get Damn. to the core. Get
magazines under the bed, a stash of hard candies. Either he's a robot or he's making a call. Hi, I'm Chen Ping. Pleased to meet you. I'll be your guide on the facility tour. Spare me the pleasantries. I've had an awful flight. Nine hours delayed, luggage lost somewhere along the way, and the airline is trying to avoid their responsibility. I'm hungry and I'm tired, and I want to straighten everything out before I'm doing your tour. Yes, so sorry about... So, someone is here for a tour of the facility. Might be a way to get in. Your flight... Just let me know when you're ready. Oh, did you bring the P-41 we left for you in the apartment? No. I wasn't informed that I should. Oh, very sorry, Mr. Pritchard. We need you to bring the P-41 to get the tour. It's procedure. Please pick it up before you come and find me. I'll be waiting by the stairs in the back of the restaurant kitchen. VIP has access to the system. Okay. Okay, code. Oh, wait a minute. Now, um, oh, how am I supposed to focus when the kitchen okay. feels like a train station? Find your inner. Okay. Okay. Quiet. Quiet. On with it, I guess. Get that water ready. Yes, I'm working on it. Find your inner. Then close your eyes. That is a calming bonus. Are you hungry, sir? Oh, God, I don't feel so good. Have a nice evening, sir. Mom, you can't call me when I am at work. I'm ready to inspect the facility now. Good. I hope you enjoyed the food. Did you bring the P-41 we left for you in the apartment? Yes. I have everything I need. Good. Let's continue the tour. Continue, you may say. We haven't even started the tour yet. But we have without you even noticing it, Mr. Pritchard. Invisibility is the best security there is. You see, the restaurant is, in fact, 
A front that lets all ICA personnel arrive unseen. Who notices a dumpling cook on his way to work? Dressing the part takes you a long way. ICA guarantees absolute discretion to all clients. We take that promise very seriously, as you will see on all steps of the tour. Come on, it's this way inside. Doesn't look like much, does it? Ms. Chen and visitor, welcome. Please report to security desk for visitor sign-in. Will do. I love the facility AI. It's really looking out for us. And we're in. The inside is a self-contained modular bill that can be disassembled and removed in less than 12 hours if we are compromised. No trace we will ever hear. I agree. Leaving no trace behind is the only sensible MO. The outside shell is a building marked for demolition. We've put a hold on it with city planning. A deliberate misplacement of the order. But have people in place to rectify that? At first shift, city construction will move in. Our policy around ICA personnel is that they are a resource, but also a risk. On top of contractual repercussions if breaches occur, we perform detailed vetting on everyone. The first, blunt vetting, is a frisk. We have, of course, never had any employees trying to bring unauthorized weapons inside the facility, but we do consider the step important. I'll need to start the setup of your visitor security clearance here, Mr. Pritchard. Hey, it's me. Please Sorry, give me your P41, up, Mr. Pritchard, so we can get things rolling. When I left. Thanks. I'll get the procedure <laughs> yeah, started. Sorry. It'll just be a few just moments, make sure it so feel fire. free to have a look around. Uh -huh. I'll meet you on the okay. other side of the face. Naturally, Thank you'll you. have to be frisked like Hi. everyone else. No exceptions, Mr. Pritchard. Looking good, man. Looking good. Just relax. You'll be on your way in a sec. Okay, let's go, sir. Thank you. Here's the B41. Please start the authentication process for top security clearance and engage the zero protocol. VIP? I'll get right on it. You're here. I've started the security clearance process. It will take a little while since you're covered by the Zero Protocol. All your data will be encrypted and inaccessible without your authorization. Only Facility AI will use it for ID analysis. Fully anonymized, of course. But we can go a few more steps on the tour while it's validating. ID analysis? What the hell does that mean? Give me a minute. I'll try to find out. As I said, personnel is the greatest asset, but also the greatest risk of the ICA. The work we do here exerts high-level pressure on our employees, and there is no room for mistakes. We perform a daily, multi-layered, full-body scan to guarantee that no employee will act erratically because of PTSD or other mental issues, drug use, physical health issues, external pressure, or moral hesitancy. The scan only takes a few seconds. Let's step inside. I'm sorry, but we can't proceed beyond this room until your security clearance is finalized. So why don't you have a little look around while we wait, Mr. Pritchard? It should be here shortly. Shit. We need to intercept that 47, or the facility AI will blow your cover. Get me into one of those computers and do it fast. You've got 60 seconds before all hell breaks loose. Axe 
access granted. Good, I'm in. And you're safe. That was a close one. Perfect timing. Your clearance just came through. Must continue. Come on, it's this way inside. I'm thinking about getting so, some of those glasses. As you see, we are lockout. very serious about security. Like what we protect is, like after all, no, core no, to no, all no, ICA no. operations. We and we alone store all legal work, contracts, target profiles, employee files, contract documentation and validation, and so forth. Furthermore, we handle all current operations, effectuate logistics of personnel and equipment. Our analysts do the client vetting, target profiles, and of course, offer real-time contract support to handlers and operatives. Storage and transmission of sensitive information like that takes constant vigilance to keep safe. We have a team of engineers solely dedicated to that task. And on top of that, we... Oh, good. There she is. Hi, Imogen Royce. I've been looking forward to meeting you. Likewise. After you. This is the blast and EMP shielded call room, the nervous system of the ICA, where we store the past and facilitate the present. In general, only a handful of people can access this room. Hush and myself, plus bodyguards and a chosen few of the engineers. I'm the most likely person to meet in here because I perform a regular physical check-in on the core console as a supplement to the remote authentication procedure. We have a strict routine of daily core maintenance. Part of that procedure is a flash process evaporating all biological matter in the room. You can see Reed through that window. It's her job to initiate the maintenance. Don't worry, we're safe as long as the safety mechanism is engaged. Even if Reed presses the button, the procedure will not happen until we leave the core room. The doors to the core room are all equipped with... <sighs> you know what, screw this tour. I know why you're really here. Cunning to the chase, I see. Knowledge is power. More importantly, knowledge is opportunity. Let me demonstrate. You have a sixth sense for irregularities. And although Hush's recent behavior has not been reported, it has no doubt brought you here. You do have authority to shut down unwanted efforts, but at heart, you are progressive and not the stickler everyone thinks you are. You have sway with the board, and as I see it, your opinion is now what decides my future and the future of the ICA. So here we go. Imagine this. Having a time schedule on a target with minute details on locations, durations, and purpose. A detailed layout of a target's actions within a defined time frame. That would transform a contract into a surgical dance of precision. No mess, no fuss. Low cost. Just how I like it. I've been working on a prediction algorithm based on a combination of big data analysis and micro-targeted surveillance of defining target markers. And my results are astounding. All this state of the art is nothing but heavy old fashioned machinery compared to what I offer. Analysts preparing detailed files, dedicating days, weeks to prepare our contracts, gone. Handlers and analysts supporting our operatives during missions, gone. Teams for cleanup and media manipulation in the rare case something unforeseen does happen, all of it gone. I asked you to imagine that scenario, but what good is imagination when you can see it with your own eyes? I've set up a little demonstration for you. Greetings, sir. Three employees unaware that I can accurately predict their behavior. Firing them will result in an already clearly defined reaction. On the top left, we have... Sharon Reed, who you saw downstairs. She is a dutiful and trusted employee. If she is to be fired, my algorithm predicts with a certainty of 97.8% that she will finish up her most important tasks before she leaves the building. Specifically, she will press the maintenance button within 11 seconds. Jeremy Bolt, 
The guard in the lower left is as tough as nails when on duty, but in private, he's a real mummy's boy. If fired, he will immediately call his mother and at her advice, seek out who he considers his best friend for support. My personal guard as it stands. Me? Really? Well, that explains why he's always next to me at lunch. At the top right, you see Alicia Reynolds, bright and very passionate about her job. However, also very possessive about her contribution. My prediction is that she will try to disable the work she has done for the ICA. If she's not allowed to enjoy her results, no one is. Specifically, that means she will try to enter the core room and disable the safety mechanism. I'll leave you to consider your choice of who you want me to use for the demonstration. Just let the guard outside the door know when you're ready, and I'll be right back. I will have a closer look. Maybe your project could play a part in the future of the ICA. Just let the guard outside the door know when you're ready, and I'll be right back. Oh, and if you decide to leave the room, a guard will escort you around. Safety protocol. Thought I'd just mention it. She really takes the term God Complex to a whole new level. Sitting in there pulling the strings like that. I think you should take her setup and give it a spin, 47. I see potential if you time it right. Alicia Reynolds. I regret to inform you that Code 41 is now effective for your employment status. Thank you for your service. Oh, no, you don't. Not now. Jeremy Bolt. I regret to inform you that Code 41 is now effective for your employment status. Thank you for your service. What? That can't be right. Code 41 is confirmed effective for your employment status. Oh, God. This is not good. This is not good. Mom, it's Jerry. I think I've just been fired. I have no idea. I thought it was going really well. I like it here. I can't believe it. But who, though? A friend. Oh, you mean Vincent? Yeah. Yeah, I'll go see him then. Okay, I'll call you later. Sharon Reed. I regret to inform you that Code 41 is now effective for your employment status. Thank you for your service. Good. That's both targets down. I just need to override this, and I'm in. You can get out now and I can take care of the data remotely. Unless you want to handle it yourself. There's no way you're getting through that door, 47. It only opens for people with an authentic security clearance. The signal is encrypted. Without a dongle, okay, we can't Okay, great. Oh, bad enough losing the job. I don't want to lose my best buddy, too.
No need to worry about it. Clients, operatives, every hit the ICA ever sanctioned. Enough to shut them down for good. But first you need to locate all files referencing Diana and yourself. I didn't realize that you... I don't know. I get why you want to protect her. So, wipe all the data referring to the two of you from their system before we publish the rest. Okay, good. I've set up a link to an information non-profit site. When you press that button, it's up there and the whole world will know. There's no undo 47. This will shut the ICA down for good. You really okay with this? It's who you've been for so long. Maybe it's time for a change. I'll just return things to normal. No need to alert them we were here prematurely. Safety Shit! I missed that. We're blown for this I can hold the doors for a little while. Use the fence to get out. Go! Now! All personnel. Breach protocol initiated. This is bad. That means they'll shoot on sight. I'm gonna create some Havoc 47. Make the core meltdown. Maybe we'll divert their attention a bit. Warning. Core overheating. Warning. Core shut down. Temperature critical. Warning. Fire detected. Breach protocol initiated. Command area is all clear. Please advise all of them. Warning. Core overheating.
protocol initiated. Security protocol overruled. shell causing shockwaves across the world, the so-called ICA files, the disclosure of a... You win. So, what happens now? The ball's in your court, Miss Burnwood. I do have other candidates, you know, most of whom have never tied me to a chair. You've seen the news. That was 47 acting on his own. He is untethered. He is unstoppable, and he cannot be bargained with. He will find you, Mr. Edwards, and I'm the only chance you've got. I'm listening. 47 has one weakness. Me. something. Buenos Aires International Airport this morning. Now watch this. Heralds. Trail ends at the airport, but turns out that a top Providence operative owns a vineyard in the area. Don Yates of infamous New York law firm Morgan Yates and Cohn. And get this, it's hosting his retirement party today. She's infiltrated them. She's sending a message. She needs my help. Could have fooled me. You don't know her. Anyway, if you're going after her, you'll need to deal with the Herald. Her name's Tamara Vidal, former CIA asset and political firebrand. She's a master of surveillance and the Constant's most trusted aide. She'll have eyes everywhere. You won't get far as long as she's in the game. Why are you telling me this? I thought you were out. Yeah. Old habits, I guess. Anyway, I... I need to go. See you around, 47. No, you won't. Because you're not an idiot. Let's just humor him. Yates likes his little games. Don't be long. You got my message. You'd never get caught on camera. Not unless you wanted to be seen. So what's the play? You're not the only one who's been busy, 47. I'm this close to becoming the next constant. I'll be able to dismantle Providence from the inside. Only one man stands in my way. Don Yates. That weasel was the partner's legal counsel for years. He's the top candidate. But remove him from the playing field. It won't work. 
If Edward suspects... I will convince him you acted alone. Retaliation for Grey. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. The Herald, Tamara Vidal. She has eyes everywhere, and they're all fixed on you. The plan won't work unless we take her out. She never leaves my side for long. Whatever your plan is, I'll help you if I can. You're sure about this? As sure as I'll ever be. Here, I got you an invitation, just like old times. Come find me when it's done. Good luck, 47. Don't let them get to you, Pam. Let's just take it from the top. Fine. You're right. Ready, Pam? Three, two, one. Mr. Yates? And it's Aaron, sir, fr from the firm. I came as quickly as I could. Yes, sir, I have the file. Sorry it took so long, but I had to act as a server to print everything, and I couldn't get my VPN to... Huh. Rich scratch their asses too when they think nobody's watching. <laughs> Don't be crude. Pay attention. Yates wants us on high alert. We've been at this for months. Ever since the 1% killings began. Nothing's gonna happen. I know. But when you start thinking like that, that's when it does. Who are we on the lookout for anyway? Yates didn't say. Just a standby for a picture ID and a kill order. Fine. Oh, Don Yates has the snipers on high alert. They await a picture ID and kill order from the guards on the ground. Yates himself is clearly off limits, but Tamara Vidal is a different matter. Practice my lip reading. They're up for this. I don't want to piss off someone who could take my head off from a thousand yards away. They're bored out of their wits. Go on, just pick something. Falcon, I have a target request. 
Standing by for visual ID. Use your camera. Over. Falcon, I'm sending a visual ID of the target. Over. Confirmed. Do I take the shot? Over. Take the shot. Target is down. Over. Kind of got the Falcon, I have a confirmed security threat. This is no drill. Over. I don't have a clear shot. Reposition target into line of sight. Over. What have you got? I'm not sure what to make of it. Your Cortazar. Yates' head of security. Well, enjoying the party. A bit crowded for my taste. Mm -hmm. Have you been down to the garden? It's remote, quiet. You'd like it. Bring your friend. I might just do that. She could use a bit of downtime. If only it weren't for the muscle. They follow us everywhere, I'm afraid. Where there's a will, there's a way. Excuse me. What do you think? Say, since you're not leaving my side, would you mind slipping down to the garden? I'm dying for a smoke, and I don't want to bother it really anybody. Stays ah, too, yes. The vilification of smoking. Flavor, a bit of systemic nudging and public dessert. opinion falls flat on his back. <laughs> Bunch of lemmings. Here we have a anyway, lead the way. A particularly worldly variety. You'll find that our grapes are going to slightly more pronounced acidity. Also grapefruit, and less of an emphasis on dark Lovely. Yeah, Command, there's some kind of fracas down here. I'm having a look around. Hold on. Target just reappeared. Confirm kill order. Over. What the fuck? Jeez. Come in. I've heard How something weird. To go I'm gonna go check Jeez. it out. How many have you heard? I'm serious. You've seen death in the CIA as a herald. You've done some harrowing things. That time you said. No. Not even one. I don't much care for dying. And hey, perhaps we never need to. They've done some amazing things with reverse aging over at Ether. Let me wait and see. And you have no good. You've got the government, change the state of nation, also the lives of millions of people. It's cold history for you. 
It has to happen. It can't not happen. You can be behind the wheel or under it. Take the shot. Your choice. Over. Hmm. Target is down. Over. Target down. It feels different up close. You liked her. She had a lot to answer for, and she would have become a threat, I'm sure of that. It's just... you're not supposed to get to know them, are you? Well, better get on with it, 47. Next up, Don Yates. I was an attorney. Ah, uh, for ah, uh, hola. Not just a pub life. We're talking D D. The whole place looked like a horror flick. Of course, Gates came down and told them who was in charge of the tanks. And you what? You'd think that was some kind of benefit mechanism. Early warning system. Would, but you'd be wrong. If the pumps malfunction, the tanks overflow. That pretty much sums it up. So, pay attention to that pump drum. As you're in the market for an extra hour. Lightning never strikes twice. These fermentation tanks are accident prone. If the pump malfunctions, the tanks overflow. This has happened before, provoking an appearance from Don Yates. It's likely to happen again. Check the pump seal, my ask. She's like, the time. Yes. And? Yeah, the sprouted wings and flew away. I for you, don't you think I would have flighted him anything was wrong? It's a seal. He's doing what he does best. Sealing. Hey, Jesus mio, what do you want from me? You know, I'm going to cut you some slack because of the baby, but you might want to work on that attitude. And so, it's just... Yeah, yeah. We've all been there. Anybody there?
hombre. Messi la ronda aquí. into the drain. Please, I'm dying. to break the news to sweet Valentina that someone took a giant piss all over her ancestral vineyard! Nobody? No volunteers to break my wife's heart. Well, all right. Show's over, people. Clear the floor. There's no way you'll clean this mess up my head. Oh, and somebody get Mr. Vargas a towel and a shot of horse tranquilizer. How many millions? Yeah. What your prize is? First, the bird. This is supposed to be my big day. What did I ever do to deserve this? sir. strike at the heart. Edwards. You know how to find him, don't you? Why, Edwards finds you, 47. He is untraceable, and he never lets you forget it. He is cocky, 
And that will be his downfall. What's the plan? Too many eyes. Meet me at the Olive Grove at sunset. One last tango, 47. How did you know? Your deal. That kind of power always comes with a price. What's yours? I think you know. I am sorry. This is a necessary evil. What have you done? Eat the brand's neurotoxin. Transfers by touch. See, Edwards learns by his mistakes, 47. And as you've clearly demonstrated, brute force is futile. It had to be me. It was the only way. To get this close. My family. I know what you did. After all these years, I finally know. I am sorry. You didn't have a choice. I did. Providence used you, but I'm no better. All I saw was a blank slate, a weapon to wield. I told myself it was what you needed, but people aren't meant to be controlled. This is a kindness. Goodbye, Agent. Are you still here? Still clinging on to your self-image? Agent 47, the Apex Predator. Always hiding behind the headlines. Was perfection its own justification? Or a willful distraction? A wall built contract by contract to shield you from the uncomfortable truth. You're exactly the tool they bred you to be. <laughs> Quite a piece of work you are. How could you possibly function on your own? You never even had a name. Until I gave you one. That's him. Burnwood never ceases to surprise me. You really are a most singular individual. And to think she wanted me to put you down. Lucky for you, I never throw away anything useful. Prepare the serum. 
Forgetting's not so bad. You've done it before. What's he doing? Is he still looking at us? I'm afraid so. Poor Sap just won't accept his days are done. Perhaps I should take him out to the woods and set him free. Oh, it's a classic. <laughs> he was a loyal tool. But everything goes the way of the horse and cart eventually. I couldn't agree more. Are you done? The toxins are playing into your fears. Don't let them. Come on. You gotta get your head straight. She wants me dead. She has every right to after what we did. But that's not what is really going on. She chose power. In the end, she was just like them. No. She found a way to turn Edward's own cleverness against him. The rest is up to you. I don't know how. You do know. Diana! Coming! Once you dispose of Edward's, I will dismantle Providence from the top down. It will finally be over. All you have to do is embrace the past. Commercial, I mean. You hear this thing has commercial applications? Who'd want to have their minds wiped? Not wiped, obviously. But that's just fine tuning. Okay, right now, the serum is awake.
corporation bought this train. supposed to be exactly Ukraine it all looks the same blizzard nah somewhere in Romania
flesh. Everything under control? Orson here had one of his feelings. Everything's on rails. Now move aside. I have a message from the boss. Yeah? Is prisoner awake yet? Oh, he's up and about. She'll be able to resist all that power. This is not how people work. She rejects the power, not the responsibility. <laughs> A noble idea. But please join me in the real world. I trust you already know what this is. Why not simply take it? Embrace who you were always meant to be. No, never again. <sighs> well, I had to try. Go on then. Do your thing. At least I die knowing who I am. What are you doing? No! No! This is what it means to lose everything. Making a mistake? It's mine to make. Oh. <sighs> Forgive me, I seem to have, uh... What were we talking about? Don't worry. We were done. International finance continues as Milton Fitzpatrick CEO Alexander Fannin joins the president of Hamden Oil, while the new founder Tim Quinn and a bunch of other members step down. It's been a long time, Agent 47. That's not who I am anymore. The pact is done. The past. Death. And yet, here you are.
I choose this path because I can. There will always be people like them. So there will always be people like us. No one is untouchable. It's good to be back.